I want to bring in Sophie Orsworth now, media writer for The Australian. Good to talk to you again, Sophie. I'll come to um, some of the royal issues uh, in a moment uh, and, uh, and the way the media is treating the coverage uh, the, this, these historical events. But I want to start with, um, with the ABC again and Louise Milligan, the very, very controversial reporter at the ABC who's been at the centre of a number of controversies. Uh, first off, of course, she's very, very well known for leading the journalistic charge, if you like, against Cardinal George Pell. Here she is. Tonight on Four Corners, the inside story of how a prince of the church was brought to justice. Yeah, of course, the legal system got that one wrong as well. Sophie eventually overturned in the High Court. There's been, of course, that defamation settlement too. A couple of hundred thousand dollars, we believe, paid for by taxpayers over uh, tweets about uh, uh, Coalition MP Andrew Lamming. And you've highlighted today some comments that Louise Milligan has made, uh, which, are, which are particularly galling in the light of all of that. At, at a speech in Melbourne where she said, if we make mistakes, that is, we in the media make mistakes, we must correct it immediately, and people who don't should hang their heads in shame. This is a classic case of do as I say, isn't it, rather than do as I do. Well, the irony here, Chris, is really something that is quite remarkable. It appears that Louise Milligan finds it awfully hard to say the word sorry. Now, she tweeted uh, several tweets about Dr Andrew Lamming last year in March, uh, falsely accusing him of upskirting a woman. And she did not apologise over this. And several months later, Dr Lamming took legal action against Miss Milligan. Now, interestingly, the ABC, as we know, picked up her legal costs. They ended up paying Dr Lamming $79,000 in damages. And the whole thing cost the ABC and you and I, the taxpayer, should I say, over $200,000 because Louise did not say sorry to Dr Lamming. So the irony of her coming out saying journalists, when they make errors, should apologise immediately is really quite astounding, given she cannot do that herself. Yeah, it is amazing. Yet the ABC today put out a statement criticising you and saying that your story is wrong. It's just nonsensical. They don't accept the basic facts here. And it's worth pointing out, of course, that the ABC media... Uh, uh, communications area is headed up by Milligan's husband. Uh, uh, he's constantly running defence for her, it seems, through ABC pronouncements. Well, Chris, I stand by my story. It's absolutely 100% accurate. I asked the ABC communications team this afternoon where in Miss Milligan's tweet last year where she spoke about these tweets she made, did she apologise? And I was uh, given a response that that's irrelevant. It's not, not uh, appropriate here. The word sorry isn't applicable. Mm. So it's really a remarkable turn of events from the ABC corporate affairs team who seem to continually protect her and, you know, Andrew Lamming, he walked away with those damages. They picked up his legal bills. She paid not a cent of this. And the ABC were left to explain why should the taxpayer be funding Louise Milligan's defamation case uh, when she did this on her private social media account. And it was yeah. very embarrassing for the ABC as a result, Chris. Yeah, extraordinary stuff. Let's have a look at some of the pictures uh, from the UK now around Buckingham Palace where, of course, so much of Australia's media and the world's media has gathered. Now, we're used to, Sophie, a fascination with the royals, but this story, uh, the passing of Queen Elizabeth II, is such a major story of human interest, of, of course, history unfolding before our eyes. I suppose it's not surprising that we're just getting such blanket coverage globally. Well, Chris, I don't think it is surprising at all. I mean, this is an incredible woman who has left an incredible legacy around the world. Uh, you, I was at, in London for her Platinum Jubilee in June. Uh, I feel very lucky that I was there, given now Indeed. that we know that she's no longer with us. But people are very interested in this story, Chris, and we'll see lots more on it in the uh, days ahead. Yes, indeed. Now, a little twist on this over the weekend, apparently. There's been a big rush on the old-fashioned print editions of newspapers. Uh, so many uh, special uh, wraparounds, so, so much coverage uh, and, uh, and, I suppose, uh, historical writing in the papers. Uh, they've all sold out, apparently. 
Well, really interesting figures, Chris. So News Corp papers in the major supermarkets were sales on Saturday were up 25% week on wow. week. Uh, there was a huge interest in this and you only had to walk into the shops or news agents to see papers flying off the shelves. Digital readership was also surging. A huge interest in this story and great to see people supporting uh, print journalism. Well, I was away for the weekend, so all my papers are still there wrapped in plastic. I, I, I should hang on to them. I'll auction them off to someone as a keepsake. Absolutely, Chris, and that's why a lot of people wanted the print edition, so they could uh, keep them. It's a, it's a special memory they want to have, and there's no better way to do it than to have a copy of the print newspapers from the weekend. Absolutely great stuff by those papers. Plenty of good reading in there. Thanks for joining us, Sophie.